Greetings, ladies. Here we are again addressing another matter that might affect your menopause. I'd like to give you some information that is just plain practical. We live in a world in which we hear so many tidbits about so many things. And many of you assume that you need to act in one way or another on everything. And sometimes you assume that every single thing will have an effect on your menopause. So I like to present some things about which you may have questions and explain their relevance or lack thereof to menopause. Recently I've been giving you tutorials on dietary options for, men for menopause. And we've discussed soy and plant-based diets, dairy, spices. And since nowadays you hear so much about gluten, I thought it would be useful to give you a tutorial on gluten and the significance of a gluten-free diet. Have you ever wondered how people choose one diet over another? Or how they get to the point of restricting their diet to only certain kinds of foods? Do you think they change their diets suddenly or gradually? In the case of gluten, what is it? that leads someone to knowing they're sensitive to gluten and need to avoid it. If you've ever heard anything about gluten, watch this video. You'll understand exactly what it is. You see, most people hear about things, but they only get a sound bite or two. And beyond that, they really know nothing. I don't want you doing what everyone else is doing or reacting impulsively to everything you hear. I want you to have real knowledge about things. So let me educate you about gluten. Let's start with the definition of gluten. Gluten is a group of proteins found in certain grains, most significantly wheat, spelt, barley, and rye. So right there, you see that gluten is something that is entirely natural. And you might be wondering, well, if gluten is natural, why would you need to avoid it? Have you ever wondered how gluten got its name? Well, you know how you get a sticky glue-like dough when you mix flour and water? I mean, it's really kind of gluey. Look at here's some, here's some flour and water, a dough mixture, and look at it. Look how gluey it is. See, it's got a glue-like effect. That gluey characteristic makes the dough kind of like elastic. And that elasticity is what gives bread its ability to rise when you break it. And it also gives bread that chewy texture that most people associate with bread. I mean, it's chewy and soft, and it's one of the things that makes people love bread. So gluten gets its name from this gluey property. So that brings us to the term gluten sensitivity. Gluten sensitivity is when you have difficulty digesting this gluey protein called gluten. Now in tutorial 112 on dairy, I taught you that your body stops producing the enzyme lactase to digest the sugar lactose in milk. So you might wonder if the same thing happens with inability to digest gluten. Do you think it's a normal thing to be unable to digest gluten like it is with dairy? Do you think we're supposed to lose our ability to digest gluten? No, the two are entirely different. You are supposed to be able to digest gluten your entire life. But some people can't break down gluten completely. The fact is, you don't digest a lot of what you eat. For instance, you don't digest the fiber in plants, but you do extract the nutrients from them. The difference with gluten intolerance is that the inability to digest parts of the gluten causes an autoimmune response. In other words, people who have gluten intolerance are simply allergic to it. It's a lot like the case with peanuts. You know, most people can eat peanuts just fine, but some people are allergic to peanuts. And those who are allergic to them have an allergic reaction if they eat them. The majority of people with gluten sensitivity have celiac disease. 
celiac disease is a gene mutation. For these people, gluten is a foreign invader that literally makes them ill. Other people have non-celiac gluten sensitivity. For them, the difficulty digesting gluten is not due to a gene mutation, but they still react negatively to gluten. So how do you know if you have gluten intolerance? Well, as with any situation in which your body dislikes something or can't digest a food, you have a list of symptoms after eating the offending food. With gluten intolerance, the possible symptoms are abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, pale colored feces, and stinky bowel movements. But those are only the symptoms directly related to your digestive tract. There are others that aren't so obvious as being due to gluten intolerance. And those include anemia, muscle pain, arm or leg numbness, and weight loss. And there's a whole list of gluten sensitivity symptoms that are the same as the symptoms of menopause. They are headaches, fatigue, skin rash, depression, anxiety, joint pain, muscle pain, and brain fog. So think about this. You have a list of symptoms of menopause, some of which are the same symptoms as gluten intolerance. And then there are the symptoms of lactose intolerance that overlap some with some of the same symptoms of gluten intolerance. So how in the world are you supposed to distinguish all these things? Well, I have news for you. This is how everything is in medicine. For every disease, there are multiple other diseases that cause some of the same symptoms. Medical school is all about learning how to rule out what isn't causing your symptoms and zero in on what is. This is why you can't use the internet to diagnose yourself. Think about it. Why would anyone go through four years of college four years of medical school, and four years of residency training if they could learn everything they need to know on the internet? The answer is they wouldn't. And you can't diagnose yourself with what you find on the internet either. So the tests that determine whether or not you have gluten sensitivity are blood tests for autoimmune diseases and a biopsy of your small intestine. But you know what? There has been a glut of gluten-free eating re recently, and most of the people omitting gluten from their diets have not had a formal diagnosis of gluten intolerance or celiac disease. Instead, most of them have simply omitted gluten from their diets, felt better, and labeled themselves gluten intolerant. Does, so does that mean gluten is bad and that we should all avoid it? Here's how common gluten issues are. One person in 100 has celiac disease, and one person in 1,000 has gluten intolerance. That means that 98% of people have no difficulty at all with gluten, and for them, products that contain gluten are beneficial. Just because some people have a peanut allergy doesn't mean no one should eat peanuts. And if you do decide to get diagnostic testing for celiac disease, you'll actually miss the diagnosis if you've already been on a gluten-free diet. And since it's a genetic mutation, you really do want to know if you have true celiac disease. Here's another fact. Most people who are supposedly on gluten-free diets aren't actually on gluten-free diets. <laughs> they eat gluten inadvertently. Some of the foods that are labeled gluten-free, you see them everywhere, gluten-free this, gluten-free that, you see them everywhere, they're actually contaminated with gluten. You know, I always like to look at the history of problems like this. And if you consider the fact that humans have been eating gluten-containing grains for 12,000 years, it makes you wonder why people are suddenly such gluttons for their gluten-free glut.
there has been a 400% increase in celiac disease in just the last 40 years. So what's going on? Well, here are some of the reasons for the glut. Modern wheat is hugely manipulated. And then the manipulated wheat is processed. Plus, we eat too many comfort foods, all of which are full of gluten. And we don't eat enough plants. And gluten-free foods are even more processed than the original gluten-containing grain. Add to all this the fact that most people who have difficulty digesting gluten have difficulty digesting many foods. And ironically, the more people have digestive difficulty, the more they limit their consumption to bland carbohydrates, some of which cause the gluten problem in the first place. So different digestive problems occur for different reasons. Lactose intolerance from dairy products occurs because you are supposed to outgrow your ability to digest dairy products. Mother Nature never intended for you to consume them beyond, beyond the time when you were weaned from breastfeeding. And gluten-containing grains are good for the vast majority of people. But all the manipulation, processing, and overindulgence of heavy gluten-containing carbohydrates are just overkill. So if you have digestive difficulties of any kind, do this. First, for two weeks, eliminate all dairy products. Nothing with a mother. So no eggs, no milk, no cheese, no yogurt, no butter, no cream, no ice cream, nothing with a mother. 85% of people who do that discover that dairy products are the problem. If that doesn't settle down your digestive tract, continue with no dairy and for two weeks omit all meat products also. So now that's nothing with a face. So no red meat like beef, no fowl like chicken or turkey or duck, no pork like ham or sausage, no fish, no seafood, nothing at all with a face. If you do each of these things for as little as two weeks, you'll know if the problem is just dairy or all animal products. And if nothing improves, try omitting gluten in addition to omitting all the animal and dairy products. Just do it for two weeks. Now I know this sounds drastic, but it's only an experiment. You're just doing this to isolate the problem. You should be able to tell immediately which one is the offending agent. If it's dairy, you'll feel better as soon as you eliminate all dairy. If it's all animal products, you'll feel better as soon as you've eliminated both dairy and meat. And if it's gluten, you'll feel better as soon as you eliminate gluten. And once you know what's causing the problem, you can add back the things that aren't the culprit that you want to eat. I'm going to bet that the majority of you will find that it's the dairy. Most people don't do experiments like this enough to figure anything out. But let me tell you, it can truly change your life for the better if you figure out what your body doesn't like. Your body talks to you all the time. You just have to listen to it. And most people pay so little attention to what they're putting into their bodies that they miss the opportunity to avoid the things their bodies hate. So dedicate yourself to just a few weeks of self-experimentation. You'll be surprised at what you discover. Okay, so now you know that gluten is good for most people, but the glut of gluttons for the gluten-free craze is confusing everybody. <laughs> it isn't a fad diet, it is a real medical problem. And if you don't have gluten intolerance, you have no reason to eat a gluten-free diet. Makes sense, doesn't it? So that's where I'll sign off today. I'll see you in a week. Follow me and subscribe to my channel. Go to my website, menopausetaylor.me. I do one-on-one -on -one consultations on Skype, FaceTime, and in person. Sign up for a consultation. You now have enough education to really, really, really benefit from all the fine tuning of everything just to you, your situation, and anything you want to do. And it's a wonderful way to make sure you're getting everything just right. I'll see you in a week. Bye.